The year is 1946. Six years ago, the Department of Transportation unified New York City's rapid transit system, but the three divisions, the IRT, BMT, and IND, are still mostly separate. At this point, each division operates its own pre-war rolling stock. For the city-owned IND, this is the 60-foot R9 fleet of 1,700 cars, constructed throughout the 1930s. IND lines, especially Fulton Street, are still being extended, even after unification, and a new fleet of post-war subway cars are needed to serve the growing system. In two years, this would come in the form of 400 innovative R10s. A 1938 R7A, 1575, had been involved in a wreck that year. No photographs remain. Its superstructure was rebuilt into a prototype for the upcoming R10 order, changes which will be described later. The underframe, electric system, and mechanical system were unchanged. In 1947, it was placed back into service. As 1575 proved to be successful, the Department of Transportation made the decision to order 400 R10 cars, numbered 1803 to 1852 and 3000 to 3349, from American Car and Foundry, or ACF, the manufacturer of many R9s. Half the cars would have Westinghouse propulsion, and half would have General Electric, or GE, propulsion. The cars were single units, each with two half cabs, one on each end of the car. Similar to the R9s, a crosswise seating arrangement was used, benches along the walls with a pair of crosswise benches between each set of doors, and individual crosswise benches at the ends of the cars opposite the cabs. Building off of the R9s, with the same general dimensions, many cosmetic changes were made, most notably the changes in the size and shape of the windows, the shape of the roof and vents, and the lack of many rivets covering the exterior. Changes in windows and the size of the car bodies would set a standard for later subway cars. Numerous changes to the interior were also made, most striking being the smaller enclosed ceiling fans, pole and strap arrangements, and the position of the roll signs. Instead of three vertically stacked signs in one window, one for route, two for destinations, like the R9s had, the R10s had three narrow signs squeezed above three side windows to avoid blocking them, spread out over a third of the car. These were not popular among passengers. The end roll signs as delivered included IND route letters and BMT route numbers, as well as destinations for the whole B division. The side route roll signs did not give a letter or number, but simply stated the lines each route ran along. The R10s also had various new mechanical and electrical features. The cars were structurally strong with their welded bodies and underframes, as well as a low alloy, high tensile construction and cast steel truck frame design. Friction bearings were replaced with roller bearings, and air whistles were replaced with air horns. The SME braking system used dynamic braking to bring down maintenance costs. Four motors were used instead of two, the cars had 400 horsepower instead of 360, and they accelerated significantly faster. These features would also become standard on later car types. However, due to the many substantial changes, the R10s could not operate in mixed consists with the R9s, not even 1575. They were actually the last cars on the B division to have rattan seats and air power door motors before the R16, six years later, made several more changes and reversed the change in side roll sign arrangement. The R10s were delivered with a gray paint scheme, two different shades separated by a thin orange stripe. On the interior, they were supposedly blue and gray, with the pattern on the floor separating seats from aisles and with a diamond around the base of each center pole. One car differed and was all blue inside, and two cars had their seats painted green and bright blue, respectively. No photographs were found of the cars which differed. The cars were built and delivered throughout 1948 and 1949, with the first run on November 20th, 1948, on the IND's A route. While the R9s roamed around the B division, the R10s spent most of their time on the A, occasionally serving the double A or double B. Their high speeds compared to R9s earned them the nickname Thunderbirds. In 1954, 30 cars were temporarily moved to the BMT Eastern Division to prepare crews for the incoming R16 SMEs. 
In 1956, 50 R-16s were temporarily moved to the A because the Transit Authority wanted to use its newest equipment for the inauguration of the Rockaway Line. This was the first time the R-10s could have been seen in mixed consists with another car type, as until that point they were the only SMEs that ran on the A. Starting in the late 1950s, all cars had sealed beam headlights installed, giving them their well-known strange headlight placement. The first R-10 to be scrapped was 3035, after an accident in 1963. Car 3135 was repaired with 3035's parts, renumbered to 3035, and returned to service. Beginning in 1962, several new paint schemes were tested. Nine cars were painted red with a black roof. One car's interior was changed to bright orange and blue. One car tested a lighter gray from the original scheme. One car tested a darker gray. One car received an orange plastic strip over its orange paint stripe. No photographs remain. Finally, in 1965 and 1966, every car was repainted into a new blue and white scheme, similar to the IRT's New World's Fair cars. The first of the repainted cars, 3331, was given a TA seal. There was some variation with different colored roofs and skirts. A year later, the white area between the lower blue area and the upper blue stripe was removed on all cars. This scheme didn't last long though, as in 1969 the fleet began to receive the new TA blue and silver scheme and the New York City Transit M logos, supposedly with a light gray and pale green interior, one car with darker gray, although there are no photographs. It was likely around this time that the rattan seats were replaced with black fiberglass ones. Soon the interior paint scheme was changed once again to use several shades of gray on different parts of the car. In 1967, with the opening of the Christie Street connection, a few R10s could be seen on the BMT Southern Division, running on the extended B. Starting in 1969, more R10s were displaced by new R42s and later R44s for use on the B and later the double C, with some cars on the A likely used in mixed consists with the new arrivals. A year later, the fleet was renumbered to a solid block, 2950 to 3349. Several cars were used to test features around this time. One car was given a pair of stainless steel doors. Another had ventilation louvers installed in its doors. There are no photographs of these tests. Car 3189 had its crosswise seats extended to seat an additional passenger on alternating sides. There are a few more accidents worth noting. In 1971, a consist of IRT cars, as well as R10-3226, was moved from Concourse Yard to Jerome Ave Yard. This move required a run up a ramp onto the IRT elevated and a pass through a station. Of course, the R10 was too wide to fit and scraped the southbound platform on its way. The car was soon back in service. Sometime before 1977, car 3047 was involved in an accident and repaired with R16 spare parts, most notably the end door. Though they had had several, in 1978 was the worst photographed accident the fleet saw. Car 3333 was leading a train into Columbus Circle and derailed, likely on one of the switches north or south of the station, and hit a wall, crushing a good portion of the car's left side. Of course, after a year or so of storage, it was scrapped. During the mid-1970s, the graffiti epidemic and financial crisis was taking its toll on the cars. To see if it would make sense to heavily overhaul its R10 fleet, the TA gave car 3192 an R42 end bonnet and was going to install air conditioning and a new interior, but the process was too expensive and it was scrapped a few years later, along with the idea of totally rebuilding the fleet. The 53 R10s in the worst condition were retired in 1977 and 1978, replaced by the R46s. This was also around the time when the last R9s were retired. 50 cars were moved to Jamaica Yard to serve the double G. Although they spent a short time on the A, D, E, and F during the R46 truck crisis, at this point the tired cars ran mostly on the double C and double G. The second least reliable car type by then, 110 Westinghouse R10s were selected for a rehabilitation under the General Overhaul Program to rid every subway car in the city of graffiti. From late 1984 to early 1986, the selected cars were rehabilitated in-house. 
Their post-go paint scheme consisted of a dark green body, a silver roof, and a black bulkhead. The interior was painted entirely white except for the black fiberglass seats. It was only at that point that the R10's roll signs were finally updated with new font and modern bullets on the end and side root roll signs. They had never received the 1967 Christie bullets. As new R68s and R68As began rolling off the assembly lines, each non-overhauled car, including every GE-powered car, got its turn to retire. The last likely made its final run in late 1988. The overhauled cars held on for about another year, the last train of R10s making its last revenue run on the sea on September 8, 1989. They had outlived the R16s and the non-rebuilt R27s and R30s. An eight-car excursion sponsored by the Electric Railroaders Association operated on October 29, 1989 on many B-Division lines, including the 63rd Street line, which had just opened that morning. Over the next year or so, the cars were shipped via the South Brooklyn Railway to New Jersey to be scrapped. The last scrap car finally left in 1993. Only two R10s were kept, one to be preserved, and one as a training car. 3184 was painted back into its original scheme and has been operating in New York Transit Museum fan trips since 2017. 3189, the car which had received the extra crosswise seats all the way back in the late 60s, had retired in 1984 and was kept by Pitkin Yard for use as a road car inspector training unit, repainted solid blue. It is currently in the restoration process. That's all for the R10s, the first SMEs and the first subway cars for unified system. If this is your first time on my channel, check out some playlists. I have plenty of other videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.